Hey, so bit of an improv one, but I wanted to keep working on my web GPU ray tracer and I figured the next step was to bring in multiple models. But the problem is that originally when I made this ray tracer, I kind of brute forced it. I hard coded a lot of things and it worked, but it was like soup, you know, technically all the parameters were there in variables and things which could be corralled into some form, but it was lacking some structure. So I'll just bring this over. There's a few things here, um, but first of all, I want to have a look at buffer partitioning. The method that I'm going with here, and I'll explain the code in a second, but I've got this buffer, which is a big allocation on the GPU, and then that buffer can have other buffers bound or allocated to it, other storage buffers, uniform buffers, whatever you want. In my case, I've got a single buffer which represents the whole acceleration structure. And then within that, a subregion for the nodes of the BVH, and then a subregion for the indices. So this is what I'm calling coarse partitions, coarse level partitions. But then those coarse level partitions further split down into fine grained partitions. Um, and these are nothing to do with the GPU. These are not GPU resources. They're just CPU resources within the GPU resource. So these partitions are pretty similar. They all have offsets. They have sizes. Um, at the coarse grained level, the offsets are in bytes and so are the sizes, I believe. And then at the fine grained level, the offsets are in elements, in element counts. So far, so good. And I constructed this buffer as a sort of state machine. So you make the buffer and then one by one, you tell the buffer to add your coarse partitions. And then one by one for each coarse partition, you tell the buffer to add fine grained partitions. And this is fine, this is a pretty good I reckon I can extend this and um, do some cool things with it, but probably useful to have a look at revisit what these data structures actually are. This looks a little confusing, I know. So this uh, BVH corresponds to the nodes of my bounding volume hierarchy, and this lookup corresponds to the indices of my bounding volume hierarchy. So these two are stuck together as a single GPU resource, and then these two things are, are two separate GPU resources. But it's important to note that any TLAS, top level acceleration structure, internal nodes will point back to themselves. Any external ones will point to the beginning of the lookup region. And then within here, any internals will point to nodes. And then any externals will point to lookups. But in this case, we can see that for these TLA, TLAS nodes, they really have an offset of zero in both cases because they're pointing to the beginning of some buffer somewhere. But for these BLAS nodes, they will have a non-zero offset because what I'm doing is I'm constructing the top level acceleration structure within the renderer based on the info that it's being given. And I'm constructing the bottom level acceleration structure within the mesh upon mesh loading. So these things are being created independently and then I need a way to sort of glue them together. Yeah, so then when we get to the lookup, the uh, TLAS indices will index into this blast descriptions buffer, which is something completely different, and it will index into an associated root node somewhere. But the root node in this case will not be zero. It will be some custom number. And this adds a further amount of complication because when I construct my descriptions, I need some way to track the associated root node for this partition of the nodes. How many times can I say node? Yeah. So with those challenges in mind, let's have a look at how I addressed it. Let's have a look at the code. Originally, I had intended this to be a full on go through it tutorial. But the one who ended up really going through it was me. There was quite a lot of tweaking, not here, but in actually getting multiple models 
into the scene. I'll briefly talk through how this buffer class works because it is pretty flexible and it could be extended to other projects, not just ray tracing. But here's the programming model. The basic idea is that we construct a buffer, but that doesn't really allocate any memory, not yet. We go through and declare each of the bindable resources which will be used by the buffer, and that starts to track how much memory is going to be used. Once all of the course partitions have been declared, the buffer can then be initialized, and this basically allocates all the memory for it. But then at any point after the course partitions have been declared, we can start declaring regions, fine partitions. And this just makes it easier later on if we want to get a view into a region of the buffer. Um, all of the code for this is on the GitHub repo as usual, but I'll just briefly step through it because there's one thing which is super important. And that is when we have a whole bunch of these, say storage buffers, for instance, a whole bunch of storage buffers stuck together into one large buffer. Those storage buffers have a required alignment on the GPU. For an NVIDIA GPU, it's 256 bytes. I think it could be different for other GPUs, but it doesn't matter because we can query it and then we can add in some extra padding to make sure that, okay, so first up, the first course partition is always gonna have an offset of zero. So no worry about padding there, but then, you know, the second, the third, and so on, we need to work out what that padding would be, if any. And the basic idea is let's say 256, or work with that. So we'll have 256 minus the modulus of the alignment with 256, because the offset that we get for the new buffer has to be a multiple of, let's say 256. Now, because 256 is a power of two, modulus can be achieved by, just to be sure, I should probably I'm pretty sure this is working correctly because I did try it for a bunch of different things, but that's a good idea. Anyway, so that bitwise AND for powers of two will perform the modulus operation. And then of course, if we get an exact number of 256, then we wanna just modulus that again to get it to zero. So yeah, but that's the tricky part. Otherwise, we're just treating this thing like a big state machine. So every time we declare a new partition, we calculate internally the offsets and uh, how much memory we're going to use. Like I said, initialization is very simple. We just create the thing. Adding a fine partition, there's nothing special about these partitions. They just, yeah. So then once we've declared those partitions, we can start using them. There are two things we can do, or two stages we need to follow. Um, first up, we need to blit to the partition, and then we need to upload the partition to the GPU. So for every course partition, the buffer class allocates a, a float32 array under the hood on the CPU to store a copy of all that data. And when it comes to uploading, we can, oh, no. When it comes to blitting, we can just copy basically into the CPU memory. And then, then when it comes to uploading, we can perform a write instruction on the device's queue to yeah, upload to the appropriate region. I got a little caught up on this. Um, the buffer offset has to be in bytes and the host offset and host size are in element count number of floats. But you know, enough of this, we'll have a look at what this looks like. So at the moment, this will look pretty similar to what we had before. Okay, so here's our scene. It's pretty much the scene we're used to. Nothing too exciting. But the benefit of having a good mental model for working with buffers, a good programming model, is that this system is easier to extend. So like I said, I was going to go through this line by line, but it is a little bit much. Code is provided. Here's what I did. It is struggling a little bit, but I went ahead and put in a bunch of different model files. This is the same, these are the same model files that I was using for my large scene test and gave them some random colors. And yeah, they're sort of moving around. 
So the fact that this works at all is pretty incredible to me because all of this data is uploaded as one single, well, not all of this data, but the, the BVH data and the triangle data are all just subregions of single buffers. Anyway, I think that's pretty cool. Here we go, here's a closer view of what's going on. I really like these flat surfaces. I think they do a pretty good job of reflecting. It looks pretty trippy. So like I said, it's, it's not a perfect system. There are some things we can change in terms of performance, but oh yeah, also a lot of these models that I've put in are just like not good models for ray tracing. Like the skulls with the pointy spikes coming out of them, those pointy spikes really, really struggle with ray tracing. But there are a few things still to do. One thing is we can get rid of these flat colors, put in textures, that would be pretty cool. Another thing is we can swap out, at the moment, I'm encoding a lot of data into every triangle. For instance, the colors are being recorded on a per triangle basis, and that really increases the memory footprint. And just in general, if we can decrease the memory footprint in any way, that will improve performance. So one of the benefits of switching to a material system with material indices is less data is being stored on the triangle. We can also, instead of doing smooth shading with per triangle, like per vertex normals, we can just put in the positions and then from those positions calculate the tangents, by tangents, all of that, and that further reduces the memory bandwidth on the triangles. But yeah, I can't think of anything else to say. Here we go. I think this is pretty cool. And yeah, I'll leave it here for now, but I will be updating this one very soon. Okay, all the best for now. Bye.